Hello and welcome to an exclusive review with me, Alex Belfield, here at CelebrityRadio.biz, where last year we had over 7.8 million minutes viewed on YouTube. This week we turn to the gloriously titled The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime for a review for 2015. The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime is one of the most original, compelling and visually inspiring plays that I have been fortunate enough to see in my 20-year career. It uses old-fashioned principles of an amazing story with 2015 set technology, scenery, music, lighting and choreography, which culminates in a highly memorable two and a half hours in the theatre. This production won seven Olivier Awards, including Best Play in 2013. The play tells the story of an autistic boy who has two life-changing incidents. This moving story of love, betrayal and personal triumph is nothing short of inspired and inspiring. Mark Haddon's book has been a favourite loved by all generations for many years, but how does this story translate to the stage? Well, Abraham Rooney, who took the lead role of Christopher during my performance and masterfully owned the stage with this exhausting and brilliant, not to mention physical performance, really did triumphantly well. The play explores the reality and challenges of living with Asperger's syndrome, a severe form of autism. Although this child was blessed with mathematical genius, simple human communication is almost impossible. It celebrates the qualities of an Asperger's child and certainly doesn't make fun or mockery of Christopher's behaviour, no matter how extreme or bizarre. I went to the Gilgood Theatre on Shaftesbury Avenue in the West End of London to meet one of the stars of the show, Emily Joyce, who played Christopher's mother. You can hear that interview exclusively at the end of this review in a couple of minutes' time. The staging of this production is some of the most sophisticated and complicated in the world. I marvelled at the complexity of the script match with the lighting, sound and set. This show has true heart. They've mastered the art of tension, passion and drama measured with humour for light relief. Some of this show is truly hysterical. To find a play in the West End, on Broadway or even on tour that is new, exciting and thrilling to watch is incredibly rare. T-C-I-O-T-D-I-T-N-T ticks all the boxes. It might not be easy to say, but it's certainly a wonderful play. Five-star review then for The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by me, Alex Belfield, here at Celebrity Radio. Recorded the 5th of March 2015, this is a summary review of the play. We now go to an exclusive interview from this wonderful play at the Gilgood Theatre on Shaftesbury Avenue with the big star of the show, Christopher's mother, is played by Emily Joyce, and she talks to me here at CelebrityRadio.biz, where last year we had over 7.8 7.8 million minutes viewed on YouTube. You can hear all our interviews and reviews at www.celebrityradio.biz. I began by asking Emily to explain what the play was about. It's written um, by the wa- rather wonderful Simon Stevens, taken from the beautiful book that Mark Haddon wrote. Umpty Tump years ago now, actually. I, I read it when it first came out, and I, I fear it may be slightly longer ago than I would like to <laughs> believe. People have differing views on what it's about. Some people think it's, you know, about this maths boy, Christopher, who is Asperger's, and he's an extremely bright boy. Simon Stevens describes his mind as being balletic, which I think is a is a wonderful way of describing it. Um, and he has a very particular way of seeing the world, which is very honest, um, but not entirely polite. Um, it's also, uh, though, the play is also about relationships, lies, deception, families, um, truth. And uh, also, uh, um, Christopher goes on um, a journey, a detective journey, to find out who killed Wellington, who is a dog that we see in the first, very first scene, has been killed quite violently, uh, quite shockingly. Um, uh, and after after a little while, Christopher discovers that there is another mystery to be solved during the play, and and he has to go on an epic and very frightening journey to try and find the answers. What's interesting about this play, I've got a friend who's a doctor in autism. She's written a book called Loving Mr. Spock, which is about Asperger's syndrome. And the way she saw it in a relationship with a man who had Asperger's was that you have to be very literal. You can't use euphemisms. You have to be very specific with these people. And I think some people think autism's about being stupid or thick. In fact, it's the complete opposite. And that's what this play explores, is where that genius can be best used. Yeah, absolutely. Although it's, it, you know, one has to point out that not all people who have autism have that genius mind 
the world can be an extremely confusing place to somebody that doesn't understand it and there are bits in the plays where in the play where um christopher talks about metaphors you know and we do use them <laughs> all the time um you know it was raining cats and dogs i mean <laughs> if you actually thought it was raining cats and dogs i mean literally thought it was raining cats and dogs how terrifying would that be there's another moment when someone says you know you'll catch your death out here <laughs> how alarming and i think that's that's a really beautiful exploration of language and and that's a very on a very simple level that is how his mind works but you know the autistic spectrum is huge and we did a lot of research about this when we were rehearsing the play um and it goes from you know somebody who's mildly dyslexic is is somewhere on that spectrum because the mind works in a very particular way to somebody that has a brilliant mind you know and people might remember rain man um, uh, there was then another film, wasn't there, that um, someone did something, something, something of a brilliant, beautiful mind. What yes, was that film? Yeah, yeah, um, You're going to come up with it and then edit that I in, aren't you? <laughs> Make me sound really clever. <laughs> <laughs> What's also interesting about the play, it sort of follows the Asperger's line with the visuals in terms of the hypersensitive stuff that it throws at you. And it is probably one of the cleverest, most sophisticated sets I've ever seen. And also, one of the most complicated in terms of what the lead guy has to do in his steps and the technology and bringing that together with the music and the acting. I mean, you guys are geniuses. This is a really clever, clever play. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm not going to take too much of that genius credit personally. I think the whole production is quite extraordinary and it, and it, does, it really does blow people away. Um, I think, you know, the set, when you first look at it, is this rather simple black box but it's got the graph lines on it you know it's all on graph paper and we all the way that we move frantic assembly who did all the movement with us and choreographed it have you know we, we did six weeks of boot camp to get ourselves fit enough to to do the play and the way that we all move is very precise uh the way that people um say the the script is all very precise because it's it's an insight into the way christopher's mind works um which is uh, quite difficult to achieve, I have to say. But I would also say that you know that we we start off. You start off with a, the most beautiful, delicate story. Um, at times, it's almost like a love story. Um, and and you you take this beautiful, beautiful story, and then you throw the bells and whistles at it. You know, the lighting, the sound, the set, the video, and the movement, and it becomes something. I think really quite extraordinary. As a bit of a geek, I sit there wondering how many things could go wrong. I mean, there's so many <laughs> opening of drawers and pulling things out. And um, I don't want to give this play away because you've really got to come and see it and, and, and enjoy it in full. But I mean, there's a lot of little technicalities through every second that if one went wrong, it would then affect the next bit and the next bit. And it could fall like a deck of cards, couldn't it? it? Yeah, it could. And, um, you know, things do go wrong. Uh, because of the way that we were rehearsed, which was <laughs> with military precision, we sort of know how to get each other out. And also, we work very, very closely as a team. We And I think the way that Frantic Assembly rehearsed and the way that the play was also rehearsed with us, we learnt to work together physically almost before we learnt to work together emotionally and mentally. So the, the physical trust between the company is enormous. And we know that we can get each other out of scrapes. So... I mean, it, it, it happens very rarely that a bit of prop might not be where you expected it to be or a, a torch might not work or something. Um, but it does happen. And then there are contingency plans. Of course, you only put those plans in once it's gone wrong and you didn't have a <laughs> contingency plan. But, you know, they do go wrong. But there's also, you know, there are, there are blackouts that are absolute blackouts, um, which, is, which is quite difficult to work with sometimes and sometimes that doesn't work. On top of the scenery, the lighting, the incredible choreography, the stunning acting, it's bloody funny. We should really make that clear because it sounds like it's quite serious. The death of a dog and a guy who's autistic and all of this is very serious, but it's hysterical. There are some laugh out loud moments yeah. for all ages as well. Oh, oh yeah, completely. And I think and, and it's it's really wonderful the way different audiences approach it. And we do take a lot from the audiences. Uh, and some people, you know, some people will find things very funny and some people won't you know some people get quite um 
concerned that we might be laughing at autism and we're absolutely not laughing at autism. I think the laughter comes from the truth and the recognition that people get as they get to know Christopher and some of the theatrical devices that are there that, that become in jokes with our audience, not amongst ourselves, with the audience. You've had such an interesting career. It's fascinating. I mean, when I look at what you've done, you've basically done everything. And as an actress, I wonder how fulfilling this is because it ticks all the boxes, doesn't it? I mean, whether it's Midsummer Murders you've done on the TV or Casualty, I mean, you can do that again if you get it wrong. In this, I mean, every step counts. Is it for you really thrilling and creatively fulfilling? It is, actually, I have to say. It really is. I mean, I'm I'm one of those actors that just, you know, I love working. It's, I'm extremely lucky to do a job that I absolutely love. But this is a challenge every time you do it. This is the most challenging physically and emotionally, you know, that, that combination that I think I've ever had to do. And it is really exciting to play every single day I and mean, you know when when we're in quite a long run here and it and i have to say there is there isn't one show that you think mm, can't really be bothered i'd rather be eating fish and chips that just isn't <laughs> <laughs> and i guess the greatest compliment i could pay you is there is no phoning it in with this show because you can't it would fall apart wouldn't it yeah it really would and yeah it would completely and you have to be absolutely on it you have to be really really focused um you know there's there's no we're all exhausted after a show um, mentally and physically um, and you know it is it is pretty much straight home to bed That's well really and, and good for you because you need to come and do it again tomorrow I'm glad that this ends happy there was a moment when I thought oh no you're not going to leave me where all the cast are dead and I'm the lucky one to be alive do you know what I mean and it doesn't leave you like that and it is a story that starts dark it is difficult sometimes to communicate with someone who's frustrated who's got Asperger's and it sort of delves into that doesn't it yeah it does and I think that's uh, um, uh, Nick Tennant and I who play we play the parents met up with some really wonderful parents of an autistic boy who and and they, um, we were very frank with them and I asked them some um, rather nice Nasty questions, I suppose, like, how on earth do you love him? <laughs> um, you know, when, when you're not getting love back in right. a conventional way. And yeah. she rather, you know, the, the mum that we, we talked to rather beautifully said, well, you do, actually, but you have to know the signs that you're looking for because, right. you know, people with autism can't show their emotions in a conventional way. Um, but, you know, if, for example, in the play, if Christopher says, I'm tired... What he means is, I'm absolutely exhausted, I'm scared, and I'm really relieved to be here. And, you know, mum has to kind of, has to know that. But, I mean, I think, I think the most touching part of the whole play is, is the frustrations that parents have. I, I, you know, whether you've got an autistic child or not, it's really tough to be a parent. Um, but you, you just love your child, and there is, you know, that is the bottom line, really. And this is about love. This is a play about love. It's the old story. It is magnificent. Um, I'm hugely impressed by it and blown away. I wish I'd have seen it sooner. I don't know how I've missed this so far, but it's worth waiting for. And to see something that's different and new and doesn't have ABBA songs in it is really nice. And it is... <laughs> put some in. <laughs> yeah, why don't you try a bit of Dancing Queen tomorrow? But, I mean, it is exceptional. It's not very often you walk in a theatre and something is so different. It is completely refreshing, and I think it's testament to the reason it has travelled to Broadway and stayed on here in the West End. Yeah, I, 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 I have nothing else to add to that. I think, yes, it does. I give you five stars. <laughs> Not that it's worth anything, but it's my opinion. This is really worth seeing. The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime is on at the Gilgood Theatre in the West End. You can see it on Broadway and on tour throughout the UK. Emily Joyce, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.